Well, there's a bumblebee in here, and it's a male early bumblebee. The males have got yellow faces. There's some dung flies, which presumably are breeding on the, uh, the dog dung. Things like this caddis fly breed in water, so that's not from the site, that's obviously flown in from some distance. There's a couple of flies here which are fungus feeders. There's a shield bug which feeds on hawthorn. There's some grass bugs. Um, some of these little flies are called dollies and they breed in wet areas. They, they could be underneath the trees. I mean, the, the soil will be damp enough under there for some of these to, to breed in the, the damper mud. Um, a tiny little mining bee, one of these that makes little volcanoes in the, the lawns. There's a ladybird. Yeah, not a bad hole. These are current galls, which only occur on oak leaves, and they're caused by a tiny beast called the gall wasp. Now the word wasp is a bit uh, misleading, they're more like winged ants, and they lay an egg in the plant, and the plant produces a chemical which um, isolates the problem and feeds the young insect. So unlike caterpillars, which actually eat the leaves and strip the entire leaf away, in this case it's a sort of an armed neutrality. The insect is getting the food it needs and the leaf isn't suffering greatly. You get different insects living on different trees. So as I'm going around I'm sampling the different ones. So this is the first hawthorn I've seen, I'm giving that a, a swish. Because this will have certain insects that weren't on the, the beaches and the oaks and the sycamores and the ash. These greyish patches on the broom are a gall caused by a gall mite. They seem to be quite common on garden varieties, but I have never found one on a wild broom. There's a big uh, weevil in there. It, um, it looks like the one that you sometimes get in houses on vines and um, whatever sour spread is called for them, its name. These big orange flies tend to breed in fungi, so there might well be some fungi growing on the trees and these are breeding in them. There are muskid flies, which are predators um, they may well be eating the young of some of these dung flies that we've been picking up. And there are lesser dung flies in here, which are another family that does something similar. Little uh, fungus beetles in there as well. And one or two ichneumons, which are parasites of other insects. Yes, that one there looks to be a hoverfly parasite. And this one with the, the marked wings is one of the picture wing flies. And that one feeds and breeds under the bark of trees. Yeah, that's a lot there. On the underside of these beech leaves there are some little white patches which are caused by mites, similar to the ones on the broom. Uh, they form a little felt patch and the felt um, produces a sugary solution which the mites feed on. Now these are tiny little things, you know, a few microns across, and there's a whole colony of them living in each of those white patches. Also on here you've got the young nuts 
the beech mast just starting to form with some of the, um, the dead flower remains. These little pale patches in the hawthorn leaves are caused by caterpillars of tiny little moths called micro moths and they're so small that they fit inside the leaf so they're not on the top of the leaf eating it. The eggs are laid and the caterpillars burrow into the leaf. Now you can see how thin the leaf is but the caterpillar is feeding inside and it's called a leaf mine because just like a miner in a three foot seam the little beast is uh, squashed in there and is nibbling away and eating the, the food. And the shape of the mine and the black marks in there are the droppings and the shape of the droppings and the plant that it's feeding on all give clues as to what it is. And it's possible to identify most of these micro moths just from finding the vines. When people think of fungi, they often think of things like mushrooms and toadstools. But an awful lot of them are these tiny little things that grow as parasites on other plants. And this particular one is a rust fungus which attacks creeping thistle. And um, I suppose if you've got a creeping thistle in your garden this is something really useful because it stops the thistle growing very well and makes it into a poor little weak plant rather than a great big uh, tough beast. And it only attacks creeping thistle, none of the others. The distortion in the leaves, I think, is caused by a virus disease which will be transmitted by aphids. So the aphids drill into the leaf to suck the sap up, but in return they are putting some spittle or whatever back into the plant and that's where the virus gets in. Now the aphids, because they are sucking up sap which is extremely um, dilute, to get enough sugar out of it they, they consume vast amounts of liquid and they have to get rid of the excess and that's what this honeydew is that's causing the leaves to be all sticky. This is the waste product that the aphids uh, are producing from the sap that they're feeding on. One of the advantages is because the sap is rising and is pushing through the plant, once they've got their mouth parts in there, they don't even have to suck, it just flows st straight through them. So these are the aphids that have been causing the, um, the honeydew and the, the damage by the viruses. There'll be some cast skins in there because as insects grow their skin gets too small, it splits, the insect comes out of it and expands to a new size before it hardens off. So you get the cast skins as well as the live insects on there. So this is the weevil that uh, I was looking at in the net before. It, uh, it isn't the vine weevil, it's a very closely related one which lives in leaf litter in woods. So I'll pick this up as I was swishing around under the trees. It's called Otiorinca singularis. Cuckoo spit is caused by frog hoppers and the young frog hopper, just like an aphid, drills into the plant to suck the sap and the sap just flows straight through it. And again like the aphid, it has so much extra liquid it has to do something with it and in this case it blows a bubble bath. So the insect sits in there, it's, it's made more safe because it won't dry out in the sun and not many animals will go in there to get hold of it. However there is one wasp that specialises in stocking its larder with young cuckoo spit insects and that just dives straight in, swims through the, the froth, grabs the insects and hauls it out and goes and sticks it in its nest to feed its young. Flesh flies are the, uh, the dustbin men of the insect world. They go around clearing up the rubbish such as the dead animals and the, the dung and the other uh, rotting material and uh, that's a pair mating.
Mmm, little caterpillar that uh, will be feeding on the, the bark. It looks really nice having all these ferns, but in fact they're bracken and they're boring as anything because hardly anything feeds on bracken. There was a scheme some years ago to import some moths from South Africa because they were bracken feeders, but uh, <laughs> I think that has died the death. Right, I think that will do for this. Uh, this sample. It's a click beetle. Um, click beetles ha are basically of two types. One of them feeds on the roots of grasses and can be a real pain in lawns, and the others feed on dead wood. And as we're in a woodland, I suspect this will be the, the latter. Uh, more little dung flies. This beast here, I think, is another uh, of the flies that breeds on bracket fungi. Some of these flies are leaf miners, and uh, if you look at um, dock leaves, you can see big pale patches on the docks, and that is where the, the grubs, the maggots of these flies are, and they're feeding inside the leaf, so they are leaf miners in the same way as some of the little moths are. Another Rick Newman. That's a fungus gnat, which obviously feeds on fungi. Um, unlike these other ones I've been talking about earlier, which are that sort of animal, which are much bigger and chunkier and feed on, uh, on bracket fungi. There's a soldier fly in here, and the soldier flies are so called because they tend to be very bright and shiny, greeny or bluey or whatever and they quite often have the scutellum, which is the little bit between the thorax and the abdomen, with spines on, so they're sort of armoured. And that one, yeah, that's the beast, and that one will have six little spines on the scutellum. They feed inside um, the stems of things like hogweed, they, the, the, the larvae feed inside the hollow stems. Well, that one looks like um, a fly called Pelidnoptera, which is a parasite of millipedes. It's going to take me hours to identify this lot, you know. <laughs> and that is from, uh, what, 10 minutes sweeping around in one very small area. And these brown patches on the leaf are caused by another leaf miner, a little moth, which eats out every last bit of green within that leaf mine. And if you get a lot of these, it can look as if the tree has been uh, blasted by fire or something, because you get these huge areas of brown on the tree. They can occasionally cause the tree a lot of damage.
It's um, a leaf mine in the, the cow parsley. It's caused by a little leaf mining fly. Ah, oh, honeysuckle. That'll come into flower later on. Be very nice. This is hogweed in flower, and that insect with its head stuck deep into the flower is a sawfly. And they're called sawflies because the female has got a saw on the egg laying tube, so it can saw a hole in the plant and lay the egg into the plant. So the egg isn't left out on the surface, it's actually encased in the plant and therefore protected from predators. Swinton, like most of Rotherham, is on the coal measures, rocks and soils, and they are quite acid rather than the limestone that gets over at Maltby. And one of the plants which grows more commonly in this sort of situation is this bed straw called heath bed straw. Most heaths and heathers are also characteristic of acid soils. So this is the sort of thing which um, is often found in quite good quality grasslands. This other plant down here is a woodrush which again is uh, an acid soil plant. And we've just got the leaves of what I think is going to be cats here. It's, it's just in bud. So again, we're, what we're getting here is not plants growing at random. We're getting a community of plants which all like the same soil and rock conditions growing together. And that's what makes habitats.